We have a fantastic speaker for you this morning, Dr. Bezdek. He is going to uh, go right into the possibly, I suppose, one of the most contentious and interesting issues uh, at the moment, and that is, are we running out of oil? He's the president of Management Information Services in the United States, and he's a renowned expert on the peaking of world oil production. He's co-authored two reports for the US Department of Energy on the economic impacts and risk management of peak oil and liquid fuel mitigation options. So would you please give a very, very warm welcome this morning to Dr. Roger Bezdek. Thank you for that uh, introduction. I want to do a couple of things uh, this morning. I want to try to give you a good basic background on the, the problem, the issues involved, some of the complications and possible solutions by running through a, a number of the, the major issues, questions, problems, misconceptions, or as I title them, uh, myths and uncertainties with respect to what's called conventionally the um, peaking of world oil production, or as economists I like to say, the problem of the demand for conventional oil uh, outstripping uh, the supply of it at the prevailing price. One thing you may have heard a lot about, or will certainly be hear, hearing a lot about in coming years, the world is, quote, running out of oil. Is this true? Well, in one sense, of course, uh, from the time mankind first extracted the first barrel of oil out of the earth, uh, we began to run out of oil. Everyone agrees that oil is a finite uh, resource. However, if running out is interpreted as, the, uh, as um, not having oil, any oil in the near future, that is simply uh, not correct. There are, current estimates are that there are about one to two trillion barrels of oil, uh, conventional oil, still left uh, on Earth, we, we, the world has consumed about a trillion barrels uh, thus far. More importantly, there will never be a shortage of oil. And I'll repeat that, there will never be a shortage of oil. At some price, supply will always equal demand. Uh, if that price is $70 a barrel or $100 a barrel or $500 a barrel, there will never be a shortage. Supply will always equal demand at some prevailing price. Nevertheless, the world demand for uh, oil is huge and growing. And production of conventional oil, which is over 95 percent of the oil we use, is simply going to be unable uh, at some point, probably in, a, in the not too distant future, to be unable to keep what, up with the demand for it. Peaking, as properly defined, is the maximum production of conventional oil. It's not reserved. It's not estimated reserve. It's production, uh, production, uh, the maximum production that uh, can be sustained for any length of time. The bottom bullet I say here. Beware of red herrings because uh, people will, will attack this idea and say, look, we have lots of coal, we have natural gas, we have oil shale, we have oil sands, we have tar sands, we have methane hydrates. Indeed, the world has a lot of hydrocarbons. None of them come, come close to being uh, as, as efficient or as useful or have the utility uh, of oil. There is simply no substitute for oil, as we'll see it is indeed the lifeblood of the world. Now, why do we say that oil production will be peaking? It's actually quite simple. Upper left-hand slide here uh, illustrates the typical production of an average oil field, like an, an elongated bell curve. Uh, oil is discovered, production increases uh, rapidly, it uh, tapers off, peaks, and then inexorably uh, declines. When, um, uh, and it, 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 this, this is true of any oil field in the world, large or small, uh, in Australia, the U.S., Saudi Arabia, what have you. Oil is, def is found in discrete uh, packages, and when it's gone, it's gone. Uh, if you aggregate hundreds or thousands of individual oil wells to a province such as the United States, you get the profile here, which is an uh, actual profile showing that you, the uh, United States oil production peaked around 1971. For nearly 100 years, the U.S. was the most prolific oil producing region in the world, the largest oil producer and the largest oil exporter. That all changed in 1971. You aggregate any number of oil peaking regions or countries, and you, you get a similar profile as for the, for the U.S. Uh, for the entire world. So what we see here is something like uh, what world oil production peaking will look like. We don't know exactly how, how it will appear or when it will appear. But this is a, as good an approximation as we can determine. If you take one thing from my presentation this morning, retain this chart. What it shows, uh, the red bars are the world's discovery of oil. The black bar uh, is consumption, the black line. Simply shows that for the past 25 years, the world has been consuming a lot more oil than has been, than has been finding. For example, last year in 2006, the world oil 
oil discoveries throughout the world totaled something in the range of five or six billion barrels. And that's a lot of oil. Unfortunately, last year the world consumed about 28 billion barrels of oil, a ratio of five or six to one. That ratio is getting worse uh, by the year. And I don't, I don't care what your opinion of how much oil reserves or the, the, the theory of peak oil, uh, this has been going on for 25 years and getting worse. Uh, eventually, reality is going to bite. This is simply the U.S. Uh, Geologic Survey estimates of uh, future oil discoveries. The yellow line is a relevant one. That's the, the P95, the 95 percent line, which is by far the most uh, likely and probable and indeed simply an extrapolation of what's been, been occurring over the past 30 or 40 years. Here's another inexorable fact. Uh, in order to produce oil, you have to find it. Uh, once it's found, uh, it's produced uh, with, a, with a time lag, and all oil provinces, all oil wells look like this. This is for Norway. Uh, oil, oil was found, uh, uh, it was produced, and the production always uh, follows discovery by, by about 20 to 30 years. Uh, so in Norway, uh, peak oil production followed peak oil discovery by about 27 years, and oil production in Norway peaked several years ago. These are other peaking profiles of different oil provinces, Texas in the U.S., all of North America, the U.K., and Norway. You can see that, that there's no single uh, profile. It can be a false peak, a multiple peak, a, a plateau, a sharp decline. Look what happened in the United Kingdom. Uh, oil peaked about 1999 has declined precipitously, very rapidly and dramatically since then, which has very dire implications for the U.K., obviously. This is a Chinese view of uh, what's going to happen. Uh, they're predicting world oil peaking uh, about uh, 2012. Uh, that gap is uh, uh, the shortage of oil that the Chinese uh, foresee, and they're, they're, they're reacting aggressively to this, trying to tie up oil reserves around the world and also trying to pr produce uh, various substitutes. For example, they have a goal of producing 2 million barrels a day from, uh, from coal, coal to liquids, by 2020. Second myth you'll hear about, hey, people have been predicting oil shortages for well over 100 years. Uh, why worry now? Well, that, that, uh, that is wrong. Indeed, there have been a lot of false predictions of uh, oil shortages. There have been some, uh, some accurate predictions as well. In, in 1957, King Hubbard, the chief uh, geologist for Shell, said that U.S. oil production would peak around 1970, and he was wi widely discounted and ridiculed for it. U.S. oil production peaked in 1971. Not a bad uh, prediction. So wrong isn't forever. Uh, many countries have passed peak pr pr uh, production and now in decline. I gave an example a minute ago. Of the 80 major oil producing countries in the world, upwards of 60 of them are already in decline. They've peaked and they're declining. Some of them are very small producers, some of them are very large producers. Why should we be worrying or reconsidering oil peaking now? Uh, as I mentioned, world oil consumption is outstripping new discoveries increasingly uh, more every year. The capital expenditure for new oil discovery products has is, is gone through the roof. Uh, the recent uh, oil well tests in um, the Gulf of Mexico late last year, for one oil, uh, oil well they, they think is a good prospect. The original cost was $1.5 billion. It's now gone up to $3 billion, and the consortium of oil companies has deferred it for the time being. Uh, Exxon is, is, has a project in, at Sakhalin Island. They're investing $20 billion and going seven miles deep. Uh, through, the, through, through uh, mud, rock, and, and ocean. Uh, so you have to ask yourself, if there's all this, there are these pools of easily discoverable uh, uh, conventional oil out there, why are our oil companies going to such extraordinary lengths to go uh, after what is essentially very moderate amounts of, uh, of oil? We have an extensive uh, database worldwide. Uh, uh, people have been looking for oil uh, forever. Uh, the past 40 or 50 years, they've gotten very good at it. There's simply not, not many large supergiant or giant fields out there are left to uh, discover. Of the 5,000 wells, approximately 5,000 oil wells in existence today producing, about 50 of them are giants or supergiants. They produce upwards of half of all the oil. So that tells you where the oil is. No one's found a new supergiant for about 40 years. That's not for lack of trying. And the supergiants are the easiest, uh, easiest to find. Finally, and, and most uh, importantly, um, many of, of the top experts in the world are pessimistic, and, and most importantly, the economic consequences, as, as we'll see shortly, uh, of what we're facing here could be, could be huge. So it's a good time to uh, uh, look at the problem. These are simply a number of forecasts of, of experts when we may run into the crunch. Uh, the preponderance seems to be sooner rather than later, uh, probably prior to 2020, 
maybe as early as uh, this year or next year or 2010 or 2012. As we'll see, if oil peaks any time within the next 15 or 20 years, we're in trouble because we've already run out of time. I, mess, I mentioned earlier that there's some, a lot of debate over how much oil is left out there. Some people think it's a trillion barrels. Others say, no, it's closer to two trillion. Uh, the U.S. Energy Information Administration analyzed this and, and found that even if the optimists are right and it's two trillion barrels, that only buys us another 10 years in terms of oil peaking. This is a graphical representation of this. So you know, here's the bad news. Even if the optimists are right, which is highly questionable, so instead of, say, peaking in 2007 or 2008, we're talking about 2016 or 2017 in there somewhere. Uh, and again, we, we, we need well over a decade to address the problem. So even if the optimists are right, we ha have a potentially very serious problem. Another uh, <coughs> question or, or myth, as I call it, higher prices will cre create more oil, right? Not true. Uh, as, as one famous geologist once said uh, recently, economists are better at finding oil on paper than geologists are finding it in the ground. Oil is found, as I mentioned, in discrete packages or, or reservoirs. Uh, you drill, you find it, you produce it, and it's gone, period. That's it. Uh, as Colin Campbell, um, another uh, uh, well-known geologist, uh, said, it's analogous to going into a pub and order a glass of beer. When you start out, the glass is full. When you finish it, it's empty, and the faster you drink, the faster it becomes empty. That's similar, similar to what, uh, what you're talking about in terms of oil productions. Whether the reservoirs are large or small or moderate, uh, they start full. The faster you pump, the more efficient, the better you are at it, uh, the more rapidly it's drained. This is a geological fact that is, that is simply misunderstood by a lot of people, even, uh, even many who are uh, ostensibly um, knowledgeable. Uh, finally, 